It didn't take long for you to realize there's a problem in the world when you turn the TV on or when you get your smartphone out and flip on the, the Facebook or some other social media app and find out what's going on out in the world, at least by someone else's opinion, but nonetheless, it, the same message. There's a problem. <coughs> There's a problem in the world today. And one of the problems that we're going to address this morning, <clears throat> and hopefully it will help you to be able to talk to someone that's out in the world and be able to help them to realize the truth, the truth that they are to, expected to obey. God expects us all to follow His will and to do what we are commanded to do. It's His sovereign right to do so. As being our Lord and Creator, He has that privilege, that right, because of who He is, to demand that we obey Him. I've entitled this morning's lesson, Who is Heaven For? Who is Heaven For? And that is a valid question. Because the world seems to think, or believe, that everyone who is good will eventually wind up there. They'll eventually make their way to heaven. We hear it all the time when someone passes away, and, and it's, it's a comforting thought. No criticism intended, but we do hear them say that I know they're looking down on me from heaven, or I'm going to see them someday, and that is a hopeful thought, and that's a good thought. But we need to understand who has the right to go to heaven and who does not. That is a valid question. Everybody eventually gets to go, according to the world. Oh, we can do as we please. The world knows that and says that very clearly. That we can do as we please as long as we are good. As long as we do some good in our life, man might be punished for a little while. They believe that sometimes we do things we need to be punished for, and man's going to be punished, and that's what hell's all about. You can get punished for a little bit, but because of God's good nature... <laughs> He won't leave us there for very long. He will punish us and then we'll get to eventually go to heaven. That is what a lot of people believe. There's a poll that was done in 2014, just to give you an idea. In 2014, the poll showed that only 74% of all Americans, they're all grouped together, 74% actually believed in heaven. And only 58% <clears throat> believed in hell. Now, as you break those categories down in different categories, different religious groups, those numbers change, but the overall is the number we're looking for. Only 74% of the people, three-fourths of the people in the United States actually believe there is a heaven. And just barely over half believe that there's a place called hell. This is, a, this is a bad situation. Because, beloved, as I've told you before, and I will always remind you, you are an eternal being. You are created in the image of God. And God is a spirit. The real you <clears throat> is inside this body that God has given us. This body will be resurrected someday, and our eternity will begin how we live our life in the flesh determines our eventual eternal home where we get to spend eternity. How we conduct our lives. It's that important. Being a Christian, having the right mental attitude towards life, all these things that we can talk about that pertain to the life of a Christian are no, it's not a social group. It's not a pastime. It has to become an ingrained part of your life if you want to go to heaven. It's not hard to understand that. The world wants to believe in pluralism. The world wants to believe in a God who really isn't mean. He's going to, going to punish you a little bit and you'll get to go to heaven anyway. Live and enjoy life to its fullest. That's what the world wants you to believe. Beloved, sin entered the world with a lie. Sin remains because of a lie. 
The devil wants you to believe that. Because he knows the truth. Think about the demons that were possessing the man whose name was called Legion when the Lord crossed the body of water and came and met him. What did the man say to him? He said to the Lord, We know who was talking the demons. We know who thou art, the Son of the Most High God. Hast thou come to torment us before the time? They know their destiny. They know there is a hell. <coughs> it's time for the world to wake up and realize there is a heaven. There is a hell and it all hinges on our choices that we make. See, the problem lies in the misunderstanding the world has concerning the topic of obedience and faith. The world has a misunderstanding. The world equates faith to believing. To them it's the one and the same. Hence we've got people out in the world that are teaching, all you have to do is believe. You can lay your hand on a radio or whatever gimmick the, they try to promote and just believe and, and confess and you're saved. You will not find that anywhere in the Bible. That is nowhere spoken of or demonstrated. The world thinks as long as we believe in God, everything is going to be all right. What the world must understand, and we too must understand this, is that faith is not just believing. It is obedience and a process that we must follow. Listen to Paul. Turn with me. And I hope you mark in your Bibles and turn with me and read in your Bibles. Look at Mark chapter, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 6 and verse 17. <clears throat> Romans chapter 6 and verse 17. It says, But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, what you were taught. <clears throat> which was delivered to you. Notice that he said form of doctrine. Here we have the process. Here we have the pattern that we must follow in order to be saved and remain faithful. And you obey it from the heart. What does it say in Romans 10? Believe it with your heart. Your heart has to be part of it. You're not going to do anything, I don't care what it is in life, to its fullest if your heart's not in it. The heart is essential in this process. Paul continues this thought in 1 Corinthians. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. He says, Watch you stand fast in the faith. Are you listening? If he was just talking about believing, he would have said, Be firm in your belief. No, he said, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Be firm in the faith. Hold fast. Notice he said, the faith. That's a definite article. Meaning it is something. It's not just believing. Matter of fact, Paul goes on to tell us that we need to examine ourselves. Look at yourself whether you be in the faith. This is the process. This is the method. This is the gospel. This is the will of God that we are to be following that's being spoken of here. Not just believing. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. Paul's continuing his talk here with Timothy, and he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Again, notice it's the faith. He didn't say, I continue to believe. Or I haven't stopped believing. No, I have kept the faith. I have fought a good fight. 
It is important that the world understands that it is not just believing that God desires for us to do. It is obedience to the pattern of faith He wants us to follow. This is where the world gets off and doesn't understand what is being required of. Yes, we are to believe. That's never been a question. Except we believe we cannot be pleasing to God. No man can come to Him and let, except he believe. But what are you going to do with your belief? The Scriptures themselves tell you, you do well to believe the devils believe and tremble. If belief was all that was necessary, the angels would be okay. And so would the demons. But see, they have, we have something they desire to look into. We have a process. We have a faith that God has given us to follow wherein we can be saved. They don't have that opportunity. It's more than just belief. Look at Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. And listen to what John says. <clears throat> Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. See that little nice coordinating conjunction that it gives equal weight to both. If he was just talking about belief only, he would have said so. This we must do. We must keep the commandments of the Lord and we must follow the faith that he's given us and be in the faith that he requires. The writer of Hebrews mentions this in the following. He mentions the pattern that we're talking about. Look at Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 5. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 5 says, Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. God has given us a pattern to follow. We are to follow this pattern. We are not just to believe and let it go and do what we want to do. Once saved, always saved. That is not true. That is a lie from the devil. We must follow the pattern. What is the pattern? It is the gospel, the plan of salvation. We must hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized for the remission of our sins. And therefore, afterwards, we must live faithfully. Faithfully what? According to the commandments. Doing the things that God has commanded us to do. Singing, making melody in our hearts. Partaking of the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week. Praying. All these things that are in the scriptures that we are to follow. That is the pattern we are to follow. We're even given a pattern of how to resist temptation in Christ Himself. Everything is given to us in a pattern that we are to follow. That is the faith that's being spoken of. And here man has gone and created traditions of his own. Equating his traditions, even the Lord even mentions this, making the, your traditions equal to the Word of God. In doing so, you make the Word of God known. Null and void in your lives. Mark chapter 7. Man's traditions, man's philosophies, man's theologies are not equal to the Word of God, nor are they the pattern we are to follow. No doctrines, no creeds, only the Word of God must we follow. This is where the world has problems. Look at Romans chapter 1, verse 5. Romans chapter 1, and verse 5. <clears throat> and listen carefully. Paul says, By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience 
to the faith among all nations for His name. Here we have that nice little word faith again. He's not talking about believing, beloved. He's talking about the process, the word of God that we have been given. You see how the world has it confused? And it's not their fault. The devil is the one that started it. He's the father of lies. As long as he can keep you confused, he can keep you wandering and thinking that you're doing what's right, but you're really not. He's got you and you don't realize it. We cannot believe a lie and, and believe that we're in the truth. We cannot follow a lie and expect God to say, oh, you're, you're a good guy, come on in here anyway. That is wrong. And that's what the devil wants you to believe. What do we have to obey? It is the faith itself. Look in Romans chapter 16, verse 26. Romans chapter 16, and verse 26. It says, But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. How, how can the world get this confused? Except the world have some help. If you listen to the scriptures, if you pay attention, it's not confusing. The devil has made it confusing. An easy example of this can be found in 1 John chapter 5. Turn and I'll show you how the world has gotten this confused. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. <clears throat> it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That word faith there, in the original Greek, is pistis. It means, by extension, the system of religious doctrine, the gospel. That's what that word means. Not just our believing. He's making reference to the gospel itself. We have to obey the gospel. We have to do what God's commanded us to do. And by doing that, we overcome the world. Not just believing. Look at verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? Who is this person? But he that what? Believeth. Here the word in the original Greek is pisteos. Meaning to believe. That Jesus is the Son of God. I'm not going to obey the gospel. I'm not going to do what this Bible says unless I what? I believe. See, belief has never been in question. We do not question belief. Belief is absolutely necessary. It's the following through with that belief and the obedience to the gospel wherein we differ from the world. We understand that there, there's more to it than just believing. It is obedience. Just as he said in Verse 4, just above, the obeying and following the system that God has given us. Just as the Hebrew writer said, following the pattern. The pattern is the gospel itself. If it were left up to just believing, then every religion in the world, and that's what the devil wants. If it were just belief, then every religion is justified. But what do we find in the scriptures? We find in Ephesians chapter 4 that there's only one Lord, one faith, one faith, again, one process, and one Lord. One baptism. Not hard to understand that. The Bible itself is telling you the faith is not just believing. Why would the Lord go through the effort to say there's only one faith, one system that you are to follow? If it was just belief. The devil is messing with people. Look at 1 Peter. Look at chapter 4 verse 17. 1 Peter. 
Again, I'm going to break it down some words for you. <clears throat> First Peter chapter four and verse seventeen. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, how shall the end be of them that obey? Apetheo in the original Greek. That means to disbelieve. Not the gospel of God. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Mark chapter 1, verse 15 says, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent you and believe. That is, in the original Greek, meaning to put your trust in the gospel. See, we need to pay attention. That's why it's so important. That's why in the wisdom of God, He had the New Testament written in Kone Greek, which he knew would become a dead language, meaning the, the words and their meanings do not change. We can go back to the original Greek and know exactly what the meaning was. Because it does not change. Look with me in, in uh, Gospel John chapter 3. Well, the world loves this, of course. There we have one of the most famous uh, verses, John three sixteen, that's quoted around the world and believed. But let me show you something interesting. We could have a whole lesson on just this one chapter if we wanted to. Look at verse thirty six. He that believeth, this is John, Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 36. <coughs> he that believeth, that word in the original Greek is piston, on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not, that word is apethane in the original Greek, which means disobey. Are you seeing the equation here? Both words are rooted in belief. One means to believe, one means to disobey. But they're both rooted in the same word for believe. Not the Son shall see life, but, what, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The devil has taken and twisted the words and their intentional meanings so that all religions can find justification for what they want to believe. And that is wrong. Belief is more than just believing. If we pay attention to the scriptures, we find that belief means also to obey, to do what God has commanded you to do. What did we find in Mark chapter 16? He that believeth and is baptized. Why would the baptism be necessary if belief was always needed? That word means to not only believe, but to obey. He that obeys and is baptized shall be saved. Not hard to understand that. You see, this... this this has so much meaning behind it. We're not just talking about the plan of salvation here. We're talking about the whole process of worshiping God. If belief is all that's necessary, then anything that I want to do in the worship service, as long as I do it under the title of believing in God, is justified. I can do anything I want to do and God will accept it. What example do we have right away in the Bible that that's not true? We have Cain, don't we? What did God say to Cain? Thou knowest to do good, and thou shalt be accepted. Do what I've told you to do, Cain, and I'll accept it. Even then, there was qualifications for what must be done in worshiping God. You see what the world is trying to do when it says, I, would, I believe, and that's, that's all we've got to do, and we're fine? 
Anybody can believe anything and be justified. But that's wrong. That is not what the Bible teaches. That's not what we're instructed. We are told to obey the Word of God. Do what God has told us to do. When we look in Revelation, we find it out about being faithful. That means to do exactly what God has told us to do. Not just believe. So who is heaven really for? Well, it's for the citizens of the kingdom of heaven. That's who it's for. Turn with me to Philippians 3 and verse 20. <clears throat> heaven will be for those who have obtained its citizenship in that kingdom. And you have to follow the process as with any nation, any kingdom, to become a citizen. Even in the United States, to become a citizen, you have to go through a formal process. Any country in the world you want to become a citizen to, when you go there, you have to apply and follow and do exactly what they tell you to do to become a citizen. Why should the kingdom of heaven be any different? The world says all you have to do is believe and you're going to get to go to heaven. No, that's not what the Bible says. In Philippians 3 and verse 20 says, For our conversation, that is our life, is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. How can Paul say this? Because he was a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. How do we become a citizen? Well, we were just over in the chapter that tells us in, in John chapter 3. We must be born again. Born into the kingdom of heaven. Buried with him in the watery grave of baptism, Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Raised to newness of life, to walk as a new creature in Christ Jesus. Our sins being washed away, the water being our, our barrier between our sins and our new life. Just as it was for Noah and the death below and the ark above. The Lord, in Acts chapter 2, verse 47, will then take me, as Paul says, he translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear Son. God does the part that we can't do for ourselves, but we follow through the process that he's told us to do in order to obtain that citizenship, to be joint heirs with Christ for the kingdom of heaven. It is not hard to understand that if we let the scriptures explain themselves. Heaven is for the obedient. Those who do what they're instructed to do. Look at Revelation 22, verse 14. <clears throat> Revelation 22, verse 14 says, Blessed are they that do His commandments, approved of by God, in other words, <clears throat> that they may have right to the tree of life. Notice that. Have the right to it. What do we have to do to be uh, have the tree of life? Obey. Fulfill our faith. Do what God has commanded us to do. And may enter through the gates into the city. The gates of what city? The city of heaven. Not hard to understand that again. You see, it's the system. It's the process. It's the obedience to God's commandments. It is for the righteous. Matthew 25, 41-46. Those who do the will of God. How are, how are we made righteous? We cannot be made righteous on our own. God gives us His righteousness. Dakosune is the original Greek form for that word. It says that God gives us our, His righteousness. We can't be righteous on our own. When does He do that? When we've been baptized into the body of Christ. Our sins are forgiven. And then God imparts His righteousness to us. Romans chapter 5, about verse 3 or 4. Not hard to understand that. You see, it's after obedience. It's after we have been baptized. After our sins are washed away. God cannot give us uh, His righteousness while you're still in sin. Belief doesn't do away with the sin, beloved. Titus tells us very clearly that when we the watery grave of baptism, the washing of regeneration is what takes the sin away. Acts 22 verse 16 as well. See, the world wants you to believe, and that is the devil, wants you to believe that all you have to do is believe, confess, and that's it. Where does the sin go? 
Well, there's some that say, well, Christ died for your sins. Yes, He did, absolutely. The Scripture says that. But how are my sins removed? What is our example in the Old Testament? The types and shadows of things to come. Where was the blood placed? It was over the lintel of the door. When the, God, the Spirit of God came by and saw the blood, He passed over. Where, who is our Passover? Christ is our Passover. Therefore, His blood is our Passover. When God sees the blood, He passes over us when the wrath of God comes. Not hard to understand that. Quit trying to confuse the issue to excuse your false religion. That's what the world's doing. Who is heaven for is for the holy. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. It's for the holy. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. How can I be holy if I am in my sins? How can I be holy if I want to do what I want to do? I can't. To be holy is to be sanctified, to be set apart for God. When I obey the gospel, when I do as God has commanded me to do, and I live according to His words, I, in a sense, am sanctified. John 17, 17, by thy word, sanctify them. When I do what I'm told to do, obedience, in the faith, I become sanctified. <clears throat> Not hard to understand that. It is for the called. It's not for everyone. Heaven is for the called. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. <clears throat> and we know that all things work to, together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. And how are we called? We're called through the Word. We obey the gospel. We do what we are instructed to do. We believe. And then our faith carries us through to the obedience of what God has commanded us to do. Heaven is for the redeemed. Revelation 21 verse 20, uh, 27. Redeemed means bought with a price. When we become enslaved to sin... Lord's death, He redeemed us. He bought us back. The price was the Son of God's life. Look in Revelation 21, verse 27. And there shall be in no wise enter into it, into what? Into heaven, anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie. That covers any category of sin that you can imagine. Sin will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, if you have not been baptized according to the faith, according to the word of God, then you are not a citizen of heaven and you will not enter because your sins remain. Not hard to understand that. <clears throat> but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, only those who are redeemed have their names written there. Who is heaven for? It's for the church, the body of believers. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power. Now, hard to understand that. Let me give you one more brief example to help you understand about citizenship. The world would have you believe that you can become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven just by believing, by the process that it has chosen to create citizenship. If I take my citizenship I have here in the United States and I go over to, let's see, as an example, just for instance, let's say Russia, and I present my my passport and all my legal documents and say, I'm a citizen of the United States and I want to be a citizen of Russia. Would they accept it? No. Would any country in the world accept my citizenship for a different country as their own? No. It is not any different for the kingdom of heaven. 
You must be a member of the Lord's body. You must be a member of the one true church in order for your citizenship to be in heaven. You cannot follow any faith of the world, the world's doctrines, and expect your citizenship in heaven to be accepted. You can say you're a citizen all you want. You will not be. When you stand before the judgment seat of God, your life will be laid to measure according to the Scriptures. Did you live according to the Scriptures? Did you do what God commanded you to do? Did you live by faith in the Son of God? That will be what you must answer. So who is heaven for? It's for those who obey the commandments of God in their entirety and live faithfully until death. Revelation 2.10 So if you're here this morning and you need to put your Lord on in baptism to become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, now's your opportunity. If you are a current citizen of the kingdom of heaven, but you have allowed your passport to go out of date, invalid, you need your passport renewed, you need to renew your relationship with God, in other words. Now is your opportunity to do that. Whatever needs you have in Christ, we're here for you. We love you. God most certainly does. His Son died for you. His love prompted Him to do that for you before you were born. Show your love for Him. Do what God asks you to do. Whatever needs you have in Christ, won't you come? While together we stand and invite you in song. <clears throat>